Every time there's a new anime game, there's a particular group of people who ask, But what about Bleach? It's a passionate community that's been waiting for a Bleach console game since 2011. And it's a bitter question, almost as if some anime game getting announced means it's another Bleach game not being made. This is a video addressing those fans. The next Bleach game, what is it and when will it come out? We're gonna try to find the answer to both of those questions, but the answers are not gonna be easy to find. And I bet you're not gonna be happy with it. Unlike this Kenpachi hoodie, all you need to do to find this is go to a Takacharms.com, the sponsor of today's video. They've just launched their Bleach collection. It's still starting out, so there aren't a ton of items yet, but my god, that Kimpachi hoodie. Otaka Charms, if you're watching, I, I really like that hoodie. I'm not even joking. Go check out the store, see if there's anything in their collection that you like. Some items in that collection can also be found in their under $10 section. If you're low on cash, that's probably your best option. And you don't have to worry about shipping because it is completely free worldwide. Free shipping. In addition to that, if you use promo code GLOBKU at checkout, you'll get 10% off anything you purchase. So send me that Kenpachi hoodie, I mean go to Otago Charms and use promo code GLOBKU at checkout. Thank you for sponsoring another video. The Bleach license is an interesting one to follow. First of all, Bleach games were mainly published by Sega. So they held the license for a very long time, with the exception of a few games that came out on PlayStation before mid-2006. All Bleach games before that time were published by Sega. The other games that came out on PlayStation were published by Sony themselves. Themselves. Back in the day, it was actually kind of common for anime licenses to be split across multiple studios. But the problem was, no matter which studio held the license, all those Bleach games were bad! Their first bet was their most successful one. They started putting games out on the PSP in March of 2005. Heat the Soul was the name of this series, and it got yearly releases all the way up to Heat the Soul 7. That's a lot of sequels. The game was developed by Aiding, and if you're familiar with Naruto games, you might recognize that name. They're the ones who developed the Clash of Ninja. Ninja series. Now, the Clash of Ninja series had its ups and downs, and so did Heat the Soul. Except it was developed for the PSP, a much more limited system than the GameCube or the Wii, so Heat the Soul ended up being a discount version of the Clash of Ninja games, and honestly, it's not gonna get much better from here. While Sony was enjoying its mild success with this series on the PSP, Sega tried out a bunch of different concepts with a lot of different developers. A turn-based battle game on the Game Boy Advance. A full series on the Nintendo DS that never quite knew what it was. It started as a game that you might as well call it a Mugen, and evolved into a JRPG, and then regretted that and became a side-scrolling Mugen again. So yeah, Sega's ventures into handheld consoles were super weird, but on the home consoles, they were also limited to Nintendo platforms, because on PlayStation, it was all Sony. So they've tried another version of the fighting game on the GameCube, and that concept later evolved into something else entirely on the Wii, but overall just super, super weird. Also at the time, PlayStation 2 was king, but the ones publishing Bleach games on PlayStation were not Sega, they were Sony. Now we're not talking about Marvel, Spider-Man, God of War, Sony. We're talking about small development budget Sony. So while Heat the Soul kept selling on the PSP, they decided to make some bigger games on the PS2. Well, bigger might be a stretch. They made something different. First it was an action-adventure, third-person brawler, those were very popular at the time. Then they made a god-awful JRPG, and then they just gave up, and kept making Heat the Soul games. But Sega wasn't done, and they wanted games on the PS2, so in 2006, along with a dubbed version of the anime, they started releasing Blade Battlers. Now this game I remember playing the crap out of. It only came out in Japan, but uh, at the time I, uh, I, I, I had a guy. I definitely had a lot of fun with this four-player arena brawler. The characters were relatively unique. You had Bankai transformations that had different effects for each character. It was really cool fan service for the time. Now looking back, this doesn't look that great anymore. But hey, Sega got the license. Now they were the ones publishing games on the PlayStation and everywhere else, except the PSP, where Heat the Soul remained a Sony joint. Again, anime licenses back then didn't quite work the way they do now. Nowadays, a studio acquires a license, and for most of the licenses you have to make a game every year. Otherwise, that studio loses the license and it goes to someone else. But back then, these types of deals were quite frequent. We saw this with Naruto and Dragon Ball as well, where depending on the territory where you're launching your game, or depending on the platform where you're launching your game, different studios could hold the same license. And this was exactly what happened with the Bleach license. So Sega acquiring the whole thing was actually a pretty big deal. They even started releasing games on the PSP, and PSP was just Sony's territory 
territory. No one was entering that, but Sega got the license and they made a deal with Sony and they released this Soul Carnival game, which was a side-scroller beat-em-up with chibi art. And even though Sega was publishing it, Sony were the ones who developed that game. That's how much of a big deal that was for Sega. But ultimately, that would be Sega's last attempt at making a Bleach game. It was uh, Soul Carnival 2. And when you stop making Bleach games, that ultimately usually means one thing. This license doesn't sell. So they dropped the license and they stopped making games. Well, in my personal opinion, the license didn't sell because Bleach never got a good game to begin with. I really think they took the wrong lesson here. The problem was not Bleach, the problem was your shitty games. Bleach is the biggest missed opportunity I can think of when it comes to anime games. We got so many of them between the years of 2005 and 2010, and every time a new thing came out, it was just not worth our time of day. Until June of 2011. This is where we jump into the PlayStation 3 game, the one most of you probably remember, and Sony is publishing it again, at least in Japan. They partnered with Nits America for Europe and America Publishing. But I'll be honest, I didn't play this one because it came out exclusively for the PS3, which I think was part of the problem with this game. You see, if a game came out today and it was a PlayStation 4 exclusive, it could still be popular. It's not a problem because the PS4 sold a ton. But back in the day, PS3 ruled in Japan, but the Xbox 360 ruled in the United States and Europe was a bit split between both. I had an Xbox 360, which immediately meant I can play this Bleach game just like many of you out there. Plus, I didn't have a YouTube channel that paid the bills, so I couldn't afford both consoles. I was just a normal person like you instead of the god that I am. Looking at this now, I kinda wanna play it, to be honest. Awesome action, decent fan service, not the best action-adventure or third-person stylized action game ever made, but hey, this looks like a good starting point for Bleach games. And then the anime ended. Well, f Without the anime running, what people assume is that fans will move on. Don't forget, Bleach was very popular at the start, and then at some point the fandom started to drop, because the anime, the story was also getting a bit repetitive, if you ask me. So without the anime, you're not gonna get a big investment in video games, because anime is king when it comes to anime games, right? And if you're not getting a big investment in video games, you know what that means. Mobile games, baby! Cheap to make and we eat the cake! What? That's pretty much all we've gotten since the anime ended. Ended. Mobile games and mobile games and Bleach characters making some appearances in other games like J Stars and Jump Force, both published by Bandai Namco, by the way. It's gonna be important in a second. And I think especially with Jump Force, we saw a renewed fandom. A lot of people were happy they could play with Ichigo, Aizen, Rukia, and Renji. Plus, these were versions of the characters that we hadn't seen before outside of the manga or the mobile games. This is the arc that wasn't covered in the anime, and it became incredibly clear how much people wanted a new Bleach game. The the number of DLC characters in Jump Force is really telling. Bleach is the only franchise to get two DLC characters in the Jump Force season pass. So the fan demand is there, and I believe Bandai Namco has already caught up with it. But if there is a new Bleach game, what type of game could it be? Well folks, <laughs> the reason why I just spent this whole time recapping the history of Bleach games is precisely because it depends. <laughs> It depends on who gets that license. I don't know who has it at the moment, but as far as I know, it's an open market out there. The, the mobile game just keeps changing hands. Every time there's a new mobile game, it's a new thing. It's a new license holder. It just keeps jumping from studio to studio. So yes, ultimately, it's gonna depend on who gets the license, obviously. But whoever gets it is gonna make something safe. Something that a lot of you could consider boring. That might be a bummer to hear, but Bleach is not in a position to take any huge huge risks. There are a lot of indicators that people are interested in a Bleach game, and that's enough reason to acquire the license, but you have no proof that people will actually buy a Bleach game until you put out a Bleach game. So you need that proof first in order to take some bigger risks later. So whatever we see next will be a safe bet. Now what a safe bet means for different studios is different things. I don't think Sega is interested in getting the license set anymore, but the last time they tried an anime game it was the Fist of the North Star game, which was pretty much a Yakuza clone. I don't think Bleach would fit the Yakuza framework too well, but that's kind of what we'll see. We'll see a studio picking something that they're familiar with, something they've already laid the groundwork for, and then they'll retrofit it into Bleach. If Koei Tecmo, for instance, picks up the license, you can expect a Warriors game. It's their tried and true method, they wouldn't build a game from scratch, and it would be a safe bet to test the market. If Bandai Namco picks it up, it's gonna be an arena fighter. Ultimately, whoever picks 
accept the license, will most likely not build something from the ground up. It's happened time and time again throughout the history of anime games and there's no reason why Bleach would be different. Of the publishers I mentioned, I think Bandai Namco has been the one to notice the recent uptick in Bleach popularity, so my money is on them getting that license, but ultimately the next Bleach game will, will most likely suck. Just putting that out there. Moving on to the next question, when will that game come out? And don't worry, I won't take as long to answer this one. So when? Never. You know, I don't believe that's the real answer, but I want to prepare you guys for the worst. Because my real answer is, there will be a new Bleach game when there is a new Bleach anime. That's just dodging the question, isn't it? So when will there be a new Bleach anime? Well, according to my fellow YouTubers, this is the year! Except 2018 was the year, 2017 was also the year, and it never happened. And I understand why they make these predictions. With this much fan demand, it's actually crazy that there hasn't been a new anime for Bleach. People like that final manga arc. An anime adaptation seems like easy money. But I'm not gonna be another one of those YouTubers telling you this is the year, because even the rumors surrounding a new season of Bleach seem so far-fetched right now. So I don't have a concrete date, for a new Bleach anime, no one does. But until we see more anime, we're not gonna see any more games. So when a Demon Slayer game gets announced in the future, it's not taking the same spot for a new Bleach game. Because a new Bleach game was never in the books. And that's a shame. I really think they're leaving money on the table with this one. Really long video that told us nothing at all! Well, I'm not just a news channel. Some of my videos are meant to create discussion. And if this creates any traction for a new Bleach game, isn't that a great thing for everyone? Ultimately, my goal is to help you think a bit more practically about these things. Because we may have a lot of passion behind Bleach, we may ha love the world of Soul Society, but these corporations are running a business. And ultimately, that business success speaks way louder than your passion. But while you don't get a game, you might get this Kenpachi hoodie. Promo code Globku and it's 10% off. But let me know in the comments what type of Bleach game would you like to see next. They've tried a bunch of things out, so let me know what you would prefer. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you next time. Bye.